All right. Well, we know that um, a couple of days ago uh, was actually what was that Wednesday? We know that uh, Donald Trump had a photo op with uh, Amarosa and Dr. Ben Carson and some other African American Republicans, and they're sitting around the table, skinning and grinning. And Donald Trump is uh, allegedly honoring African American History Month. Okay. And he said, quote, I'm very proud now that we have a museum on the National Mall where people can learn about Reverend uh, Martin Luther King, uh, so many others. Uh, Frederick Douglass is an example of somebody who has done an, an amazing job that is being recognized more and more. I noticed uh, I noticed. Uh, so these are some of the comments. When we come back, we're going to talk about that. Then we're going to get into um, Frederick Douglass, okay? Um, and Governor Mike Pence tweeted about Black History Month to honor it, but he, he he honored it by talking about Abraham Lincoln freeing the slaves. He didn't talk about any African Americans. He talked about a white man freeing the slaves. Interesting. He, he didn't talk about the 186,000 African Americans who fought in the Civil War who fought for their freedom. Very interesting. Okay. We'll deal with this on the other side of the break. Listen to the Michael M. Hotep show right here on the Empowerment Radio Network, where knowledge is power. Welcome back to the Michael M. Hotep show right here on the Empowerment Radio Network, where knowledge is power. All right. That's an excerpt from Hidden Colors for Religion and White Supremacy, available right now at AfricanHistoryNetwork.com. All of my DVD lectures are there. We also have the Hidden Colors Family Bundle Pack, where you get nine DVD presentations in that bundle pack. Okay. So, um, Wednesday during a uh, morning round type round table discussion with some African American Republicans. Uh, this was honoring African American History Month. Then you had uh, Mike Pence, former governor of um, Indiana. Huffington Post Black Voices has an article yesterday. He said um, he tweeted uh, trying to acknowledge African American History Month. Right trying to acknowledge African-American History Month. In a tweet, he said, as Black History Month begins, we remember when President Lincoln submitted the 13th, Amend submitted the 13th Amendment ending slavery to the states. Hashtag National Freedom Day. Hashtag National Freedom Day. Really? Uh, that's, where, that's, that's where you want to start the history with? Now, uh, Mike Pence's tribute to Abraham, uh, former President Abraham Lincoln, did not sit well with many on Twitter, who call who called out the tone deaf tweet, and implored the Vice President to become better acquainted with the achievements of Black men and women. As qu as kind Twitter users reminded uh, uh, Mike Pence. Black History Month is a time to honor black people in American history. Now, Ava DuVernay, Ava DuVernay, uh, director of the movie Selma and director of the documentary 13th, she tweeted, maybe remember when actual black people did stuff besides Ben Carson and Omarosa, of course, and um, about that 13th Amendment. Oh, never mind. Because we know that the 13th Amendment is going to because of the 13th Amendment and because of the black codes, it's going to re-enslave a lot of African-Americans into the convict leasing system and, and into the sharecropping system. Now, Joe Gibbs uh, on Twitter said, as Black History Month begins, let's, some, let's somehow find a way to make this about white people. I think blacks should be thankful uh, for, uh, um, and he signs it, Mike Pence. Simone D. Sanders on Twitter said, what the hell is wrong with Mike Pence and the Trump administration? This is just downright stupid. I implore you to raise the bar. Francesca Ramsey on Twitter said, can't wait for Women's History Month when Pence and Trump thank the brave dudes who let us have a month outside the kitchen. So you had a lot of comments like that on Twitter. And Mike Pence showing how tone deaf he is. But this is the same guy who doesn't want to acknowledge that implicit bias in policing 
is a problem. So you can see why he's tone deaf, right? All right, so uh, News1.com uh, has an article from uh, Wednesday. President Trump on Black History Month. Frederick Douglass has done an amazing job. This is exactly what we didn't need on the first day of February. Okay. And as I said uh, on Wednesday show, because we didn't broadcast live yesterday, I had to do my lecture at the Jungle Juice Bar. As we said on Wednesday show, it didn't, it didn't appear that Donald Trump knew that Frederick Douglass died in 1895. Didn't knew that Frederick Douglass wasn't alive anymore. Okay. Um, Huffington Post Black Voices has another article. More and more about Frederick Douglass. More and more about Frederick Douglass. Frederick Douglass' accomplishments are still very much alive, not just during Black History Month, but every month. Now, as co-founder of Frederick Douglass Family Initiatives, this is written by uh, Robert Benz, who's the co-founder of Frederick Douglass Family Initiatives. Robert Benz, B-E-N-Z. As co-founder of Frederick Douglass Family Initiatives, I'm able to publish exclusively the following statement from the direct descendants of Frederick Douglass. The president's comments from the Roosevelt Room of the White House about Frederick Douglass were noted and appreciated by us, the Douglass family. In fact, we believe if we had more time to elaborate if he had more time to elaborate, the president would have mentioned the following. Frederick Douglass has done an amazing job enduring the inhumanity of slavery after being born heir to anguish and exploitation, uh, but still managing to become a force for solace and liberty when America needed it most. Recognizing that knowledge was his pathway to freedom at such a tender age, teaching himself to read and write and becoming one of the country's most eloquent spokespersons, standing up to his overseer to say that, quote, I am a man, because he beat up his uh, uh, master when he was about 16 years old and ran away, risking life and limb by, uh, uh, by escaping the uh, abhorrent institution, the institution of slavery, composing the narrative of his life and helping to expose slavery for the crime against humankind that it is, persuading the American public and Abraham Lincoln that we are all equal and deserving of the right to live free, establishing the North Star newspaper when there was very little in the way of navigation or hope for the millions of enslaved persons, because this was an abolitionist newspaper that he established, okay? And he established a newspaper with Martin Delaney, if I remember correctly. Supporting the rights of women when few men of such importance endeavored to do so. Arguing, uh, uh, arguing against unfair U.S. immigration restrictions. Understanding that racism in America is part of our, quote-unquote, diseased imagination, diseased imagination. Recruiting his sons who were born free to fight in the war to end the enslavement of other African-Americans. Being appointed the first African-American U.S. Marshal by President Rutherford B. Hayes. So this is uh, after 1870 or either in 1877 or after 1877 because Rutherford B. Hayes becomes president in 1877. Being appointed U.S. Minister to Haiti by President Benjamin Harrison, serving as a compelling role model for all Americans for nearly two centuries. Uh, we, we look forward to helping reanimate Douglas's passion for equality and justice. We encourage the president to join in that effort. Like, like uh, President Trump, we use the present tense when referring Douglas's accomplishments because his spirit and legacy are still very much alive, not just during Black History Month, but every month. Leading up to the bicentennial of Douglas's birth in February 2018, 
Here are some of the initiatives that we, the Frederick Douglass family, will be implementing, as well as some of those we hope to implement with the support of this administration. The institutions it leads and the American people, black, brown, and white alike. So uh, you'll have the publishing, pub, they'll, they'll publish the bicentennial edition of narrative of the life of Frederick Douglass, an American slave. Uh, they, they, they'll give uh, a hard copy of the book to one million young people in schools, churches, clubs, and detention centers as part of their one million abolitionist project. They'll collaborate to protect They'll collaborate to develop the Protect Human Trafficking Prevention Education Program in the state of California. Protect Human Trafficking uh, Prevention Education Program in the state of California. They'll also create a national Frederick Douglass curriculum for elementary and secondary schools as well as colleges. Now, this was already planned before Donald Trump said made those comments on Wednesday showing he has no clue who Frederick Douglass is. Somebody should have somebody should have said, hey, why don't we invite Frederick Douglass over to the White House to talk about the problems in Chicago? He probably would have said, yeah, let's do that. Or he probably would have said, oh, you know, I, I talked to Mike Pence about that last night. We think that's a good idea. Now, also renaming the original bill that governs the nation's anti-human trafficking work Domestically and abroad, they want to rename it the Trafficking Victim Prevention and Protection Act. Also, renaming the bill to honor uh, Frederick Douglass during his bicentennial, uh, the Frederick Douglass Trafficking Victims Prevention and Protection Act. They want to rename that as well. Um, there are these are just a few examples of how Frederick Douglass has impacted and will continue to impact this country. We look forward to helping reanimate Frederick Douglass's passion for equality and justice over the coming year, leading up to his bicentennial in 2018. We encourage the president to join in that effort. In freedom, the Frederick Douglass family. So that's the education on Frederick Douglass for Donald Trump, who probably knew nothing about Frederick Douglass. I wanted, I, 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 hopefully he didn't think Frederick, hopefully he didn't think Frederick Douglass owned a chain of lingerie stores uh, called Frederick's of Hollywood. Ho hopefully he didn't think that's the same like Frederick. I hope not. But with this guy, you never know. All right, we'll be back in a few minutes. Listen to the Michael M. Hotep show right here on the Empowerment Radio Network with Knowledge is Power. We'll be back in a few minutes. Hotep family, this is Michael M. Hotep, founder of the African History Network, host of the African History Network show on 9, 10 a.m. the Superstation. Hey, we just finished my February 5th, 2017 show. I also host the Michael M. Hotep show on the Empowerment Radio Network Monday through Friday, 4 p.m. to 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I want to let you know uh, about the latest installment in the African History Network lecture series for February. It's taking place Saturday, February 11th, uh, 2017, 3 p.m. to 7 p.m. at the Jungle Juice Bar located at 14929 Charlevoix Street in Gross Point Park, Michigan. Uh, Gross Point Park, Michigan, right across the street from Detroit. I'm dealing with great African women in history, the mothers of civilization. Great African women in history, the mothers of civilization. So we'll talk about some great African women in our history from all different periods, where we talk about Dink Nesh or Lucy, 3.2 million years ago, whether we talk about Osset, who the Greeks called Isis, um, and when we deal with the first holy trinity of Asar, Osset, and Heru, we'll talk about Ma'at, the personification of truth, justice, righteousness, balance, harmony, order, and reciprocity. We'll talk about women like Queen Nzinga of Angola. Uh, we'll talk about um, uh, Angela Davis, uh, Catherine Johnson, who uh, the film uh, Hidden Figure and the book Hidden Figures is about uh, a number of different women throughout our history. Some had natural hairstyles, some wore weaves, some wore perms, some didn't have any hair.
okay? So we're going to deal with this. This is coming up uh, Saturday, February 11th, 2017, 3 p.m. to 7 p.m. at the Jungle Juice Bar, 14929 Charlevoix Street, Gross Point Park, Michigan. Uh, free event, donations accepted. We have information at our website, africanhistorynetwork.com. AfricanHistoryNetwork.com. You can also um, uh, give us a call, 313-462-0003, 313-462-0003. If you want me to do a presentation for your group or organization, email me at info, I-N-F-O, at AfricanHistoryNetwork.com, info, I-N-F-O, at AfricanHistoryNetwork.com. And all of my DVD lectures, all 30 of my DVD lectures are at our website. You can order those. You can read all the articles I've wit written at our website as well. We have over 700 podcasted episodes of our of our radio shows over the last seven years um, as well, and a recommended reading list of books also at our website, AfricanHistoryNetwork.com. So remember, uh, and I also want to let you know I'm doing a webinar the next day, Sunday, February 12th, 3 p.m. to 5 p.m. We're doing a webinar dealing with great African women in history, the mothers of civilization. We'll have information about the webinar at our website, AfricanHistoryNetwork.com. Uh, I'm doing that in conjunction with the Black History School and BlackDen.com, okay? So we'll have all that information at our website uh, also. Hey, remember, um, what you do for yourself, what you do to yourself, and what you allow other people to do to you is based upon what you think about yourself. Right now, let's correct wrong behavior. It's not over till we win. We'll talk to you next time. Peace. Now, blackpass.org has um, a good article uh, about uh, Frederick Douglass. So we're going to go to that here in just a minute. Uh, now, Frederick Douglass uh, lived from 1818 to 1895. He was a prominent American abolitionist. He was an author and orator. He was born a slave, and he escaped uh, at the age of, okay, escaped the, at the age of 20. All right, I thought it was 16. I think that was Bass Reeves that escaped at 16, but he escaped at the age of 20 and went on to become a world-renowned anti-slavery activist. His three autobiographies are considered important works of the slave narrative uh, tradition as well as classics of American, uh, of, of American autobiography. Frederick Douglass' uh, work as a reformer ranged from his abolitionist activities in the early 1840s to his attacks on Jim Crow and lynching in the 1890s. For 16 years, he edited an influential black newspaper and achieved international fame as an inspiring and persuasive speaker and writer. In thousands of speeches and editorials, he levied a powerful indictment against slavery and racism, provided an indomitable uh, voice of, how, uh, of hope for his people, embraced anti-slavery politics, and preached his own brand of American uh, ideas. Uh, an abolitionist writer and orator, Frederick Douglass, was the most important black American leader of the 19th century. Uh, born Frederick Augustus Washington Bailey on Maryland's eastern shore. Uh, he was the son of a slave woman and probably her white master. Upon his escape from slavery at age 20, he adopted the name of the hero of Sir Walter Scott's The Lady of the Lake. The Lady of the Lake. Now, Douglas immortalized his years as a slave in a narrative of in, in the book narrative of the life of Frederick Douglass, an American slave, which came out in 1845. This and two subsequent autobiographies, My Bondage and My Freedom in 1855, and The Life and Times of Frederick Douglass in 1881, marked his greatest contributions to American culture. Written as anti slavery propaganda and personal revelation, they are regarded as the finest examples of the slave narrative tradition and as classics of American uh, autobiography. Okay, and that is uh, an excerpt from uh, history.com. History.com, they have a um, article on Frederick Douglass also. All right, now I, I remember seeing an episode of the TV show Bonanza, an episode of Bonanza. And they have Frederick Douglass in there. Frederick Douglass is passing through the town. If I remember correctly, it was William Marshall 
who played the role of Frederick Douglass in that episode of Bonanza. Okay. Um, but uh, the article from um, BlackPast.org, um, here's an excerpt of it. Frederick Douglass' life spanned important decades of American history in which the contradictions of race, class, and gender were debated. Douglass played a crucial role in those debates. He spoke out against uh, northern race prejudice as well as southern slavery. Uh, he challenged uh, segregated Sabbaths either white or black and criticized the race prejudice of uh, immigrant labor organizations uh, which excluded black freedmen okay um, and you you have to understand the labor unions were created uh, most of your labor unions um, we, we find them being created after slavery ends to protect jobs for white men okay because there were at least at least 262 skills trades and crafts that African people had in this country from 1619 to 1865. And once slavery ends, then these former slaves are able to compete for these jobs. Okay, so the labor union, we see the National Labor Union created in 1866. You're going to see other labor unions, uh, American Federation of Labor and um, you'll see the AFL uh, created, things like this, to protect these jobs for white men. Okay. Now, Frederick Douglass once remarked that his son could more easily become an apprentice in a Boston law firm than in any working man's organization, even while, realize, even while realizing this was the only male speaker at the Seneca Falls, New York Convention, in which Elizabeth Cady Stanton and other activists issued a quote-unquote declaration of women's rights. Frederick Douglass arguably, uh, Fre Frederick Douglass gave argu arguably his most famous, uh, um, uh, speech, quote, uh, is called, what, uh, what to the slave is the 4th of July? What to the slave is the 4th of July in Rochester, New York on July 5th, 1852. Okay. His theme was that American liberty was a fraud replete with thinly veiled crimes that would embarrass uh, a nation of savages. Now, as the United States rushed towards the Civil War, Frederick Douglass was forced to choose sides between African Americans who wanted to return to Africa and those who wanted to remain in the land of their birth. Beginning in the 1830s, a series of national Negro conventions held in various northern cities debated whether to go or to stay. Frederick Douglass advocated remaining and fighting to change the United States. During this, period, Doug, during this period, Douglass was confronted by the black nationalist Henry Highland Garnett, who in 1843 called on the slaves to rise up and strike for freedom, and by Martin Delaney in the 1850s, who schemed with the American Colonization Society in support of immigration to Africa. However, with the passage of the Fugitive Slave Law in 1850, even Douglas began to entertain radical and violent solutions uh, which would help blacks gain their freedom and at the same time destroy American slavery. His new radicalism led him to support John Brown's raid uh, in Harper's Ferry, 1859, by permitting John Brown to stay at his home for planning strategy. With the outbreak of the Civil War, Civil War starts 1861, Douglas urged uh, black men to support the war effort and specifically, specifically to join the Union Army. He wrote essays such as Men of Color to Arms. Uh, two of his sons were among those men who joined the all-black 54th Massachusetts Regiment. After the war, Frederick Douglass served as president of the Freedmen's Bank. He recognized the failure of the re of the Reconstruction era, and in uh, an 1888 speech entitled "I Denounce the So-Called Emancipation as a Stupendous Fraud," I denounce the so-called emancipation as a stupendous fraud. In the remaining years of his life, Frederick Douglass served in a variety of federal positions. 
which included America's uh, Consul General uh, in Haiti, 1889 to 1891. And we'll continue this on the other side of the break. Listen to the Michael M. Hotep Show right here on the Empowerment Radio Network, where knowledge is power. We'll be back in a few minutes. Hotep family, this is Michael M. Hotep, founder of the African History Network, host of the African History Network show on 910 AM, the Superstation. Hey, we just finished my February 5th, 2017 show. I also host the Michael M. Hotep show on the Empowerment Radio Network, Monday through Friday, 4 p.m. to 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I want to let you know uh, about the latest installment in the African History Network lecture series for February. It's taking place Saturday, February 11th. Uh, 2017, 3 p.m. to 7 p.m. at the Jungle Juice Bar, located at 14929 Charlevoix Street in Gross Point Park, Michigan. Uh, Gross Point Park, Michigan, right across the street from Detroit. I'm dealing with great African women in history, the mothers of civilization. Great African women in history, the mothers of civilization. So we'll talk about some great African women in our history from all different periods, whether we talk about Dink Nesh or Lucy, 3.2 million years ago, whether we talk about Osset, who the Greeks called Isis, um, and when we deal with the first holy trinity of Asar, Osset, and Heru, we'll talk about Ma'at, the personification of truth, justice, righteousness, balance, harmony, order, and reciprocity. We'll talk about women like Queen Nzinga of Angola. Uh, we'll talk about um, uh, Angela Davis, uh, Catherine Johnson, who uh, the film uh, Hidden Figure and the book Hidden Figures is about uh, a number of different women throughout our history. Some had natural hairstyles, some wore weaves, some wore perms, some didn't have any hair. Okay, so we're going to deal with this. This is coming up uh, Saturday, February 11th, 2017, 3 p.m. to 7 p.m. at the Jungle Juice Bar, 14929 Charlevoix Street, Gross Point Park, Michigan. Uh, free event, donations accepted. We have information at our website, AfricanHistoryNetwork.com. AfricanHistoryNetwork.com. You can also um, uh, give us a call, 313-462-0003, 313-462-0003. If you want me to do a presentation for your group or organization, email me at info, I-N-F-O, at AfricanHistoryNetwork.com, info, I-N-F-O, at AfricanHistoryNetwork.com. And all of my DVD lectures, all 30 of my DVD lectures are at our website. You can order those. You can read all the articles I've wit written at our website as well. We have over 700 podcasted episodes of our of our radio shows over the last seven years um, as well, and a recommended reading list of books also at our website, AfricanHistoryNetwork.com. So remember, uh, and I also want to let you know I'm doing a webinar the next day, Sunday, February 12th. 3 p.m. to 5 p.m. We're doing a webinar dealing with great African women in history, the mothers of civilization. We'll have information about the webinar at our website, AfricanHistoryNetwork.com. Uh, I'm doing that in conjunction with the Black History School and BlackDen.com, okay? So we'll have all that information at our website uh, also. Hey, remember... Um, what you do for yourself, what you do to yourself, and what you allow other people to do to you is based upon what you think about yourself. Right now, let's correct wrong behavior. It's not over till we win. We'll talk to you next time. Peace. All right, so right before the break, we are talking some about Frederick Douglass. Educating people on uh, Frederick Douglass, abolitionist, orator. Um, he was also a newspaper publisher as well. Uh, author because uh, Donald Trump it was clear Donald Trump didn't know anything about Frederick Douglass um, okay alright Willie Daniels said thanks I got it now alright so let's go back to this in uh, just a minute here I'm trying to post something alright then I want to get into this story about Tamron Hall Tamara, you know, you hear me talk about Tamron Hall a lot here on the show. Uh, watch on MSNBC. I called her the Halle Berry of MSNBC. She's an excellent, excellent journalist. Tamron Hall has left the building. Uh, she left MSNBC on Tuesday, January 31st. We're going to talk some about that because NBC is bringing over Megyn Kelly, and a lot of people are upset about it. They're bringing over Megyn Kelly from Fox News. A lot of people are upset about it. Okay. All right. So uh, back to Frederick Douglass. All right. So uh, we know Frederick Douglass uh, dies in 1895. But in the remaining years of his life, 
Frederick Douglass served in a variety of federal positions, which included America's uh, Consul General to Haiti, 1889 to 1891. Uh, and that was a post that he held simultaneously with the position um, of uh, charge de affairs to Sant uh, Sant Santo Domingo, uh, now the Dominican Republic. Um, his activism continued even into the late, uh, into, even into the last few years of his life, working with Ida B. Wells Barnett, um, Frederick Douglass co-authored an indictment against the organizers of the 1892 Columbian Exposition held in Chicago in an essay entitled, Why the Colored American is Not in the World's Columbian Exposition. Why the Colored American is not in the world is not in the world's Columbian Exposition. Now Frederick Douglass died in Washington DC in 1895. An essay written in 1857 captured his unrelenting zeal to fight against injustice when he said, "Those who profess to favor freedom and yet deprecate agitation are men who want crops without plowing the ground. They want rain without thunder and lightning. They want the ocean without the awful roar of its mighty of its many waters. Okay, and I remember Doctor uh, Doctor uh, Leonard Jeffries quoting uh, Frederick Douglass uh, by saying that as well. So check out this entry at uh, blackpass.org. Blackpass.org. They have an article on Frederick Douglass. Check that out also. Okay.